Welcome to the Holy Land and the biblical site of Caesarea Philippi. Here is where Christ brought his disciples and where Peter confessed who Christ was being the Son of God. So it's a fascinating place and you can see in the background here in a moment uh, what's here. But uh, let's take a look at this place here where Christ brought his disciples and asked them, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So uh, Caesarea Philippi is located about 30 miles or 40 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. Um, it's the place where Peter's confession of who Christ was took place. And it was close to a high place where Jeroboam set up a golden calf for the northern tribes of Israel to worship, which led to their downfall later on. So this high place that Jeroboam set up, he set up two high places. One was in uh, Dan. So uh, this is not far away uh, from that place. Uh, Baal worship uh, took place here during the period of the kings of Israel. Later under the Greeks, it became the key place of worship to the fertility god Pan or Pan. During the time of Christ, there was a temple to the underworld built here where, for, where false gods were worshipped. You can still see some of the partial ruins of it here. It was considered the gate to the spiritual underworld and by the known world at that time, and was extremely popular and a common place for worldwide gatherings to worship the underground, underworld kingdom of darkness. And it lit was literally considered the gate of hell, the gate to the underworld, uh, by the known world at that time, coming out of the mouth that we'll show you here was a water and they felt that that was the entrance into the underworld. And once again, they had an altar built here. They had a temple built, built here. And it was one of the key places in the known world at that time where worship of false gods uh, took place. The disciples were very uncomfortable coming to this demonic uh, dark place. And it was probably forbidden by the Jews to even come here. And from Caesarea Philippi, from this place, Jesus began his last journey to Jerusalem to be crucified. So this was his uh, farthest place north he would be uh, prior to making his trek, his journey to Jerusalem uh, to be crucified. So eight days after visiting this place, Christ took Peter, John, and James up on a high mountain and was transfigured before his presence. So let's read this powerful account of Peter's confession of who Christ was. It uh, says in Matthew 16, 13, it says, Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it." So the backdrop of where we're shooting here, and you can see it, is a, a monumentous, a solid rock. So not only was Christ saying upon this rock, upon Peter's confession of who Christ was, but he was also brought them here to show them probably one of the biggest solid masses of rock that there, there possibly is in Israel. So he was also showing them figuratively that he was the rock as well. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, from Caesarea Philippi, Jesus began his trek or began his path uh, south to uh, the cross in Jerusalem. And it says in Matthew 16, uh, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and be killed and on the third day uh, be raised. So. Uh, from here, he began his trek south, and then, of course, Peter took Jesus aside and said, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And Christ turns to Peter and says, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of man. So, interestingly, 
moments prior, Peter uh, professes that Christ is the Son of the living God, and then shortly afterwards, because Christ said, I'm going to die on the cross, Peter uh, kind of rebuked uh, Christ, and Christ said, get behind me, uh, Satan. And in connection with Peter's confession of Christ, and Christ's purpose to begin his last journey to Jerusalem to be crucified, he makes this bold statement about the cost of discipleship and following him. So uh, we have Peter's confession of Christ here, and then, then Christ begins his ministry to Jerusalem. But prior to that, he makes one of his most boldest uh, professions Christ does of the cost of discipleship. And he says in Matthew 6, 24, we're in this same context of Scripture, the same passage of Scripture. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will, will repay each person according to what he has done. So right here in this area, we have Peter's confession of Christ, we have Christ beginning his ministry to Jerusalem to be crucified, and then Christ gives this powerful proclamation of the cost of discipleship. There are several deep truths uh, to contemplate about this unique place, and let's look at a couple that uh, stand out. Uh, in Christ's response to Peter's confession, he states, The gates of hell would not prevail, or some versions of the Bible say, shall not stand against the church. So it says, uh, upon this confession of, of, of who you say I am, Peter, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So what do the gates mean? This passage, uh, there, it's a rich, uh, rich, deep passage, and it deserves a little mining from our part to really understand what Christ was saying. So what do gates mean? Because that's a key uh, word in this uh, passage. What do the gates mean? Gates were not used for offensive purposes, but defensive. So gates to a city were a defensive place where they had several rooms, and, and soldiers would stand above it, and they could, they could arm, and they could uh, shoot, and they could, if people tried to enter, they, they were on top of them. So gates in the ancient world, in the time of Christ, were used for def defensive purposes. They were used to keep the enemy out, to keep them from entering a certain place. Christ said that the gates of hell would not be able to prevail or stand against the church. So as, as big and as powerful as Satan's kingdom might appear, it will not be able to stand against the power of God's kingdom and the church. So uh, contrary to what some might understand, the church is not uh, on defense. The church is on offense. The gates that refer to Satan's kingdom will not be able to stand against Christ's kingdom, Christ's church. So Satan is in essence trying to defend. It's the church and Christ that are on the offense, that are moving into, invading in, taking over, influencing, impacting, converting, saving on the offense. So God is on the offense, uh, moving into Satan's territory. So some people think that the church is just kind of defensive and that uh, Satan's kingdom is on the offense and we're just trying to kind of protect ourselves and maybe hide out sometimes in our churches and maybe our homes and maybe our Christian schools with all due respect, as wonderful as they are, and they're good, I'm not discrediting those, but it's not where, where Christians are on the hideout, we're on the offense of like Christ and his ministry, ministered to all kinds of places, to prostitutes, uh, went into the Pharisees' homes, uh, tax collectors' homes. He was on the offensive, taking his kingdom, his message, to uh, a hurting, needy, uh, dark world. And that's the same that uh, we do. So the church is on offense, and the church is advancing, and the kingdom of God is growing and spreading. Uh, the gates of hell entail three main factors. One, the physical reality of hell. Uh, the power and reality of Satan, and the, and the lies and deceit of Satan that are found in each culture which deceive many. So uh, Satan's kingdom involves the culture of a, the culture of a society, uh, their beliefs, uh, the reality that Satan is there. So it's, it's, a, it's a literal reality that uh, Satan is real. 
Um, so as mentioned, are we on the offense trying to influence and affect the world for Christ, or are we mainly stationary and in a defensive mode against Satan's kingdom of darkness? And do we know the truth of God so that we can advance the truth against the lies and deception of Satan and the world that follows him? God's truth is packaged contained in his word. We need to know his word in order to be able to not be deceived and to differentiate between Satan's lies, the world's philosophies, the culture's philosophies, and what the truth of scripture is. And unfortunately today, many people, many Christians do not, are not well acquainted with God's word, so they are easy easily deceived. They're not sharp uh, spiritually. They're not, they're not powerful mentally in, the, in their spirit and in, in, in their knowledge of God's Word. So they're easily deceived. We see that today. So here are some dangers of the gates of hell that are facing Christ Church today that I believe we should be on the offensive against and influence. Uh, we should be on the offensive and influence a common belief today that there are no absolutes. Uh, that's a lie from the kingdom of darkness. Uh, the common belief today that truth is just what each person believes to be and what works for them personally. That's a lie from Satan's kingdom. The tr that truth is subjective and is not an absolute. There's not a definite right or wrong wrong, truth, or a, a lie. Uh, there's a, it's just kind of a postmodern mentality where everything's relative. So the common belief that feelings and emotions determine truth and what's right or wrong, that if it feels good, it must be right, or if it makes me happy, it can't be wrong. So these are lies from Satan's kingdom that uh, the church should be standing against and each believer should be recognizing and, and standing against that the view that truth is rigid, intolerant, and judgmental. Uh, truth is an absolute. Uh, truth is uh, a fixed uh, reality. Um, so you can have truth and then uh, a variation of 10 versions. Uh, it just, it just doesn't work that way. So in summary, uh, let's, ra let's wrap up at this place here, Caesarea Philippi. Uh, Caesarea Philippi was a demonic place of worship and was considered, considered the literal gate of hell. Christ purposefully took his disciples here to show them that his church would be so powerful that the gates of hell would not be able to withstand its power and influence. So it wasn't by accident that Christ brought them to this area, this region, this place to show them that even though this was the center of uh, demonic worship, the underground worship considered the gate of hell, that it would not stand against Christ kingdom, the Christ kingdom on the offense would just, in essence, demolish it. And it, it is in the process of, the, of that. And when Christ comes back in power and great glory at the end of the tribulation, he will destroy uh, Satan's kingdom. So uh, from this place, uh, began Christ began his last journey to Jerusalem to be crucified. It was here. Uh, Christ made the bold statement about the cost of discipleship and what it would mean to follow him. And that we should understand that the nature of the church uh, is that we are called to be on the offense, not hiding out or uninvolved, but influencing the world for Christ. And lastly, we should realize that truth and love will speak and lovingly share uh, the truth of God's word with those bound in this in the darkness of Satan's kingdom. Uh, it is the truth and the light that will rescue them. So we need to be stating and proclaiming the truth. So here we are, Caesarea Philippi, um, the place of Peter's confession of Christ. The gates of hell will not prevail. Stand against my kingdom, Christ says. So uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've been challenged by it. I hope you take uh, these things to heart and recognize uh, why Christ brought his disciples here and what his purpose was for them and for us today. So thank you for watching and God bless. Thank you.